Hello and welcome to The Rabbit Atheist. I'm Ed Raby, a former pastor turned atheist, now compassionate anti-theist. Welcome to my channel. Feel free to like or dislike the video as you see fit, so feel free to hit those buttons. Feel free to comment below, and I would appreciate it if you'd subscribe to the channel and hit your notification bell for more content as it is released. You're also free to share my videos as much as you like, because the purpose of this channel is educational in regards to atheist and deconversion issues, and any issues related to those issues. A hearty shout out to the Rabbit Nation. Join the nation by hitting that subscribe button, and if you want to support the channel in a more tangible way, uh, hit the join button in your membership options, which leads to citizenship will be presented to you. Today I want to continue on in my Tuesday Bible studies uh, where I talk about uh, when God kills. And I've covered several topics uh, before in this series. And today I want to go in a little bit more different or interesting direction because sometimes in biblical studies you pull back and you look at a book as a whole. And today I want to look at a New Testament book because one of the criticisms that often is leveled at people that we talk about how much God kills people in the Bible is there seems to be a dearth of killing in the New Testament. Now, part of that is the nature of the literature. A lot of the New Testament is just letters written back and forth. And I could quibble and say, well, yeah, there's this part where God kills his own child. But the big you know, questions of how much God is a, you know, this genocidal maniac, if you will, in the Bible, seems to get laid bare, you know, he only kills his own son so that everybody else can live kind of thing, is kind of contradicted by one particular book in the New Testament called the Book of Revelation. Now, when I was a preacher, I very rarely preached from the Book of Revelation. I felt that it was a difficult book to preach. There are certain parts of it that you can get away with, like preaching about the seven churches and you know, things like that, you could kind of get past some of that. But the book of Revelation, regardless of who you talk to, is just a weird book. Um, it's apocalyptic literature, and so it is designed to give a view of the future, but the tone throughout it is very vengeful, okay? Uh, it's all about, uh, you know, the righteous getting their vengeance and the martyrs getting recompense in several places in, in it. it the martyrs cry out and say, you know, when are you going to avenge our blood? You know, there's this real tone of vengeance to it. And it's one of the things that used to bother me about it and still bothers me even more that this supposed meek and mild little church that's supposedly all about love and caring about people actually has this vindictive tone. And, you know, even the writer of Hebrews, I said, uh, pulls the Old Testament verse, vengeance is mine, I will repay kind of thing. But in the book of Revelation, yeah, that's taken to a whole new level where the church people seem to be asking for vengeance and God is granting it to him in the book of Revelation. Now, throughout the book, you have different moments uh, in Revelation where God kills people, okay? Now, I understand that the book of Revelation is a future book. It's not really talking about history, but According to a lot of people, this is about future history. And so therefore, what you have is God is saying, you know, if, if you thought I killed before in the Old Testament, you ain't seen nothing yet. Okay, there's really this notion in the book of Revelation that God is about to do even more slaughter. And on a global scale, like everybody's going to feel this, okay? And a lot of Christians have taken that very literally. There's a lot of people that still believe in this book as being a roadmap to the future. When I was studying it, I began to realize that it probably meant more to the people in the first, second, third century church than it ever would mean to me, because a lot of the revelations and who the symbols were probably had more to do with what was going on back then than anything that's modern. But somehow, you know, people take this to wherever lengths it wants to. But I'm looking at the overall, well, story of the book of Revelation. Because you have God, you know, bemoaning the fact that there's nobody able to open this book uh, with the seven seals. And then suddenly Jesus comes from the Lamb. Okay, the character of the Lamb comes forward, opens the seals. He's worthy. The last seal leads to seven trumpets. The last trumpet leads to the seven bowls of God's wrath. And it just gets fun all the way through the book where God kills people. You know, I, I mean, the real fun is the bowls of God's wrath where God inflicts unbelievers with boils, kills every living thing in the sea, destroys all the rivers, turning them into blood, burns the earth with heat, 
causes darkness and then a whole bunch of other fun that comes from that and the beast and everything and the false prophet and all this other crap is, is all in there too. And the whole idea of the book of Revelation is this God is pouring out his wrath in the final days to vindicate himself again, you know, and his church people, his martyrs. When are you going to avenge yourself on us? And there's several themes that appear in this book that I want to talk about because one of the things is it's not just that you don't see any of the church martyrs, you don't see God himself in this book weeping over the death that he is causing. If anything, there's almost a, yeah, we're justified in doing this kind of, kind of attitude. There's nobody crying tears, per se, over all the death that's going to take place. In fact, God seems to be, this is the way it is, I'm done, I've had enough. Okay, And this becomes a real issue in the book of Revelation because you don't really see anybody calling for people to repent, really. But there's a tenor, you know, you better get in the books, the Lamb's Book of Life, which is another theme that appears in this book where it said over and over, and those that are not in the Lamb's Book of Life, they end up suffering more things. And then at the end, the fun really begins for them because they get killed again. That's the funny thing about this book is, is almost a threat. If obey or, you know what, I'm going to kill you twice. Okay, and so it's not just a, you know, when we talk about when God kills, we're not talking just about, you know, this idea that God does kill people for various reasons. Some of them don't make any sense in the book of, of the whole book of the Bible. But in the book of Revelation, we get an even darker side to God where he's killing out of vengeance for his people. He doesn't give two craps about other people on the other side. Now, we've seen this tone before. I mean, throughout the Old Testament, God orders genocides of different groups of people that don't agree with his group of people. His group of people is special and unique, and therefore, they're the ones that deserve protecting. And this theme continues in the book of Revelation, where you have this group of people that are in the book Slam of Life, that are the martyrs for the faith, and so on and so forth, where they are his special little group, and he protects them, and he, and he you know, looks out for them more than everybody else. The one thing that the book of Revelation, one of the themes I think that gets reinforced in the believer's heart is this idea that you're part of this little special group and there's an elitism that comes with that, that no matter what the future holds, you're going to be preserved and all the rest of these people that have caused you trouble, well, they're going to get theirs. And that is kind of the kind of fear factor. The second thing that the book of Revelation brings in is this idea, you better get in that Lamb's Book of Life. You better work hard to being in there. You better figure out what it means to take that. And, and be careful, because there's a thread in there where it says literally in one of the early chapters with the seven churches, and, you know, you better keep doing this, or I will blot, you know, and I will not blot his name out. Well, God doesn't make idle threats about the Book of Life, so he is genuinely threatening, hey, you better stick with this, or I'll blot your name out. Of the book of life. And this fear factor, you know, get in this little exclusive little group and you better stay in there or all these horrible things that this book is talking about are going to come to you. It's God literally threatening to kill you twice. Okay. And that's the thing about the end of the book of Revelation, because, well, you know, kind of the coup de grace, the grand finale, Jesus comes out of the clouds and literally slaughters the army in front of him with a sword coming out of his mouth. No chance of repentance, no mercy, nothing. You know, it really is. There is no mercy here. And he slaughters them all, you know, and kills them all, and destroys them. It's really anticlimactic, which is kind of boring. I think the, the biblical writers could have worked on their writing technique. But, and then the fun really begins. Because everybody that is killed, everybody that's died, the sea even gives up the dead. All of them end up standing before the Lamb's, the Lamb's great white throne judgment, where God is, has this final judgment of all humanity. And a lot of people have commented on this channel over the years, well, God doesn't really kill people. That's their own choice. He doesn't throw anybody into hell. 
Some of you need to read the book of Revelation and actually read the end of it because God literally says he throws these people into hell. I'm sorry, the implication of the great white throne judgment is those that are not found in the Lamb's book of life, God himself throws them into the lake of fire. Okay, and you really need to read your book. Okay, do not fear the one that can kill the body, but fear the one that can kill the soul in eternity. That's, I'm paraphrasing that verse a little bit. I'm talking about God. Okay, God is the one who initiates the final judgment, or he isn't sovereign. Okay, if, if it's my you know, free will choice not to serve him that is ultimately decided, then I'm the sovereign one, and God isn't sovereign anymore. And, you know, you, you need to accept the implications of some of the verses of Scripture. And the fact is, one of the big implications of the book of Revelation is, at the end, it is God who makes that final decision of who gets into heaven and who goes to the lake of fire forever and ever. Whatever brand of theology that means to you. You know, whether it's annihilation or burning in hell forever, I guess that's your business. But here's the point. God, at this point, after... All these people have gone through very horrible deaths. They've been slaughtered by Jesus. They've been burned by the bulls of God's wrath. They've been killed, died, whatever. <clears throat> okay, all of it has happened to them. Every human being faces the terror of death and has to go through some traumatic experience or something. Some people get off lucky, some people don't. But they go through all this suffering in life, all this other crap that happens to them. And then they stand before the great white throne, and God says, well, you know what, congratulations, you made it this far, but you know what, you're done. Throw them in the lake of fire. If you don't obey, you didn't obey me, you didn't do, believe in my son Jesus, or whatever else you want to put in here as Christians, suddenly the book of Revelation says, guess what, you get to die a second time. You don't get us to just die this time, you get to die the second death, and this one is forever. And... There's some debate as to whether or not you'll be conscious for the rest of it. You know, I'm doing this because I love you, you know, and I care for you. It doesn't really come off that way. I'm sorry, but if you're looking for a book of the Bible that's going to tell you about the love of Jesus and the love of God towards humanity, you won't find it in the book of Revelation. The only thing you get out of this book is that there's this select group of people called the the saints, the martyrs, whoever you want to call them. And they're the ones in the Lamb Book of Life, and they're the ones that get preserved regardless of what they did. You know, because the great white throne says, hey, they opened up the book of their deeds. And then they opened up the book of life. And the book of the deeds had nothing to do with anything other than, you know, this is how much judgment, you know, this is what's going to condemn you. And then they open up the book of life. Yep, oh, yep, these people get in. The rest of you sucks to be you. Okay, there's no opportunity to repent again. There's no, oh, now that I see the reality of God, I believe. No, nope, no, nope, sorry, you're done. And you're thrown away, okay? <clears throat> it seems kind of wasteful on God's part, to be honest, to throw away a whole bunch of human beings just because they didn't get into his little club. And that's the thing about this. Um, my real problem with the book of Revelation is what it does to people. Number one, I think it reinforces this hubris about having faith and having religion in the fact that, you know, you have this group of people that, and this has existed, you know, it's either been Israel, God's chosen people, the church, and now, you know, the people in the books, Glam's Book of Life. It's a common theme throughout the Bible of this being a special remnant group where God preserves you. The second thing it does is the whole fear factor, you know, get right or you're going to be killed twice or for the Christian believer, don't leave the faith or you'll die again. You know, you'll, you can have your name blotted out of that lamb's book of life or a third one, you know, what picture does this paint of God? Is he really all that loving? Is he really all that caring? I don't think it does. I think the book of revelation kind of contradicts that this is God literally promising you better do what I say. You better obey or I'm going to kill you twice. Well, the book of Revelation is kind of a big you know, thing, and I'm just kind of giving you kind of my overview thoughts of having read the book several times and tried to preach from it several times. Some of my thoughts now as an atheist, as I look at the book of Revelation, I can see its purpose of why it was included. It's not about having an actual roadmap to the future. It's more about 
keeping the faithful faithful. It is a very typical tactic to use the view of the future to keep people in line. And that's exactly what it's all about. It's one of those great books where, you know, you either are going to gain everything or lose everything. There's no proof of heaven or hell or an afterlife. You know, I keep getting comments of like, well, you don't have any proof there isn't an afterlife. Well, you don't have any proof there is one. And you're the one making the claim that there is one. Would you please provide me proof? And so the book of Revelation plays into that fear of death. It plays into that fear of having to face judgment for one's actions in the end, you know, and not really getting away with anything. It plays into all that and tries to scare literally the hell out of people. And that's why I have a problem with it today. It seems like a loving God, one who cares about me, would try to express and convince me through loving action, not a promise of obey me or I'm going to kill you twice. That kind of seems to undercut that. But I would be willing to, you know, entertain all the comments about the book of Revelation in general in the comments section. I'm always interested in hearing what you have to say. Theist or non-theist, it's always interesting. But the book of Revelation has always bothered me until now, and I'm kind of glad it's a work of fiction. And it has all the prophetic power of every horoscope and uh, fortune cookie that I have ever read, um, which means none at all. So thanks for stopping by. I appreciate every like, share, and subscribe. Comment away in the comments. I would be very interested to see what you have to say about the book of Revelation as a whole. You know, it's one of those books that's very controversial one way or another. So it's always a good time uh, to talk about it. So thank you very much for doing that. And as always, live your best life. You only get one go around and then it's over. And uh, so you don't want to waste all your time, money, and opportunities on the trappings of religion and faith, but rather give yourself to the people that you love and care for, building up your own life and making this a better world. You'll be happier if you do. Trust me, I speak from experience. And as always, thanks for stopping by, and I'll catch you next time.